love story of Shah Hussain, a Sufi mystic, and Madhulal, a Hindu Brahmin boy. Maas charejar panjar huya, kadkar lagiya hadiyas. Same sex, interfaith union, as well as eroticism. Nijamudin ke darwaje par is vede vich makna hathi sangal baal khede. Heart as passe on that way. Babur's sexuality and his love for the boy, Babari, by far my favorite test. Man, I'm such a hopeless romantic. Mughal Emperor Akbar was impressed. Who stole hearts for sport? Tarihe Ishq series. Look, friends, here is the boy who's just stolen my heart. I feel your pain, bro. Hello, hello, and welcome to another episode of Eyeshadow and Itihas. I think it's episode 13. Um, I will put the correct sequence here in case I'm incorrect. And I am Ruchika Sharma. For those of you who have joined us very recently, Eyeshadow and Itihas is a passion project wherein I talk about a topic of history, which is Itihas, while I put together an eye look like this one over here. As for me, I am Ruchika Sharma. I teach history for a living. I do have a few more credentials which have been listed in the description box. Also in the description box are a list of sources pertaining to today's topic, which you can go ahead and read if whatever I say here sparks your curiosity on the subject or if you just want to fact check whatever I say over here. And now that all that is over, I am super excited to announce another new series on Aishadu and Itihaz and this one is by far my favorite test. This is the Tarihe Ishq series. Now in this series we will not only look at the famous love stories in the subcontinent's history but we will also be looking at the different ideas of love and affection in the subcontinent's history. And as part of the Tarihe Ishq series today I will discuss the absolutely beautiful love story of Shah Hussain a Sufi mystic and Madhulal, a Hindu Brahmin boy. Breaking the societal bonds of religion as well as sexuality, the same-sex love story of Madho and Hussein reached the pinnacle of love and spirituality. Hussein spilled his longing and love for Madho in his kafiya, his poems, while Madhu braved the ire of his family to be with Hussain. Their story is one for the ages. There is same sex, interfaith union, as well as eroticism. Ideas of love which are perfectly natural but were and still are unacceptable to the society. In many ways, however, know that Madhu and Hussain's story could be the success that it is, considering we still talk about it and know about it today, primarily because the societal acceptance of the same-sex love story, as well as the interfaithness of Madhu and Hussain, was a lot more than it is today. While I discuss this absolutely amazing story, I will be putting together this soft pink look using uh, this palette, which I got at a Stella discount a couple of months ago. Really proud of it. And without further ado, shall I am here. So the first character of our story, Sufi mystic Shah Hussain, was born in 1539 AD to a family of new converts to Islam. His grandfather was a Kal Sarai Rajput while his father, Sheikh Osman, was possibly a Muslim weaver since a term that Shah Hussain often uses in his poems to refer to himself is Julaha, which means weaver. So these poems that I was referring to called Kafi, plural Kafiya, were pioneered by and made popular by Shah Hussain himself. And it is these poems, these kafiya, that form the main source for Shah Hussain's story, particularly his passionate and spiritual love for Madhu, a Hindu Brahmin boy. Besides this, Hussain's biography, 
Hakikat al Fukra, which literally means the truth of the poor, impoverished, the lowly, penned in 1662 AD by Mahmud ibn Muhammad Pir, is also one of the earliest sources on Shah Hussein's life. Now, this text, the Hakikat al Fukra, is basically what is called as a hagiography. Now, a hagiography is a long, mostly eulogistic text that details the life of a saint. But coming back to Hussein's early life, at 10, Hussein was initiated into the Qadri Sufi order with Sheikh Behlol Dariai as his murshid or peer, basically a spiritual preceptor, at Chinot, a town on the outskirts of Lahore. Now, while most of Hussain's learning confirmed to the Qadri Silsila's understanding of the cosmos, his personal spiritual ascension happened quite late, at the age of 36, where one of the ayats of Quran, which described life as nothing more than play and a distraction due to pleasure, led Hussain to abandon all restrictions of piety and live life with the innocence and wonder of a child. Now in traditional tarot, yeah, that card thingy, this is best exemplified by the full energy, where you begin afresh with wonder and excitement, running amok, knowing that the universe will catch you if you fall. Now this obviously did not go down well with the others who had never experienced this fresh start. And Hussein's reckless abandon earned him the epithet of Malamati, one who is disgraceful. For Hussein, once asked to lead prayers by his murshid, Sheikh Behlul Dariai, broke into a fit of laughter in the middle of prayers. Hussein was now a proper rebel, a fakir who dressed in red, drank wine, begged for alms, sang, danced, and also had amorous dalliances with boys. And it is here that Shah Hussein meets the second character of our two-character love story, Madhu, a Hindu Brahmin boy who became the beat of Shah Hussain's pulsating heart. Man, I'm such a hopeless romantic. Madhu is described in the Hakikat al-Fukra, the saint's hagiography, as a beautiful, delicate youth who stole hearts for sport. And this is exactly what happened when Hussain and Madhu crossed paths. And when Hussein saw Madhu on the streets, he's described in the hagiography as having shouted out, Look, friends, here is the boy who's just stolen my heart. <laughs> Full marks for subtlety, Shah Hussain, sir. Interestingly, the people who Hussein confessed his love to reminded him that Madhu is a Brahmin boy. And Hussein, while acknowledging the religious difference, also divulged his complete helplessness courtesy the throes of love. We're then told that Hussein actively quoted Madhu, which was bordering on stalking, to be honest, considering Hussein would follow Madhu wherever he went. And Madhu initially turns down Hussein's many advances. So Hussein does the next logical thing, which is to spend each day and night outside Madhu's door, weeping ceaselessly, yearning for Madhu's love and earning a really bad rep for himself throughout Lahore. Oh man, this makes me sad. This helplessness of Hussain's love also finds its way into his kafiya, basically his short poems of four to 10 lines with a refrain and a rhyme scheme. Comparing himself to Heer of Heer Ranjha's Ish, Hussain says in Punjabi, 
सजन बिन राता हुईया वडिया मास चरे चर पंजर हुईया कड़कन लगिया हडिया विच बेसिकली मीन्स विदाउट माय बिलविड माय नाइट्स आर सीजलेसली लॉन्ग माय फ्लैश फॉल्स ऑफ चरेचर इज फ्रॉम चढ़ना विच इज झड़ना बेसिकली फॉलिंग ऑफ द हिंदी वर्ड झड़ना लिविंग अ स्केलेटन हुज बोन्स ऑल्सो क्रीक वेरी विसर वेरी ग्राफिक वेरी मच पहैप्स वॉट हुसैन मस्ट ऑफ फेल्ट एज ई पाइंड फॉर माधो एट हिज डोर स्टेप एज अ वेटर ऑफ लव आई फील यर पेन ब्रो बट आर माधो इज रिलेंटलेस अंटिल ऑफकोर्स बसंत कम्स विच इज बेसिकली स्प्रिंग द फेस्टिवल ऑफ ब्लॉसम्स विद अ सिकली स्वीट स्मेल ऑफ लव इन द एयर मोहम्मद पीर the author of haqeeqat al fukra chooses the festival of holi to be the visal e sanam for husain and madho visal comes from the word wasl which basically means union coming together so holi comes and there is much gaiety and drinking and madho is also a part of this festivity and he finally on this day decides to go to husain and rub some color on his shoulders while singing and dancing with husain touched by this gesture starts dancing with madhu yay finally vasla heart has passed on that bhai what a rookie mistake god i'm ashamed interesting that the setting for vasla is spring or basant a time of the year that has a special place in sufi poetry for example amir khusro's famous saqal ban for nizamuddin aulia or the khadi boli nizamuddin aulia nizamuddin ke darwaaje par aavan keh gaya shike rang aur beet gayi barso saqal ban the lover who promised to turn up at nizamuddin's door at spring time hasn't turned up for years which proves to us two things a ishq is clearly painful and b the sufi concept of ishq and spring time or basant are inextricably linked and since ishq is so much pain husain's wasl with madho didn't really seize their trials and tribulations madho's brahmin family behaved like a quintessential brahmin family opposed to interfaith liaisons and dissuaded madho from meeting husain yet madho's love for husain does not waver when madho is asked to accompany his family to haridwar madho refuses and stays back in lahore to be close to husain it is in fact husain who promises madho's family that madho will be there in haridwar a miracle that husain performs by asking madho sitting in lahore to close his eyes and teleports him to haridwar madho takes a dip in the ganges closes his eyes again and is teleported back to lahore So the legend here is not only used to show Madho's defiance in favor of love but also Hussein's prowess as a Sufi and since their many attempts to dissuade Madho from being with Hussein fails assassination attempts are carried out on Hussein who obviously escapes unharmed since he is a powerful peer hussein then invites madho to come live with him in bagbanpura a town which is away from lahore possibly their alliance didn't curry favor with most of lahore but madho isn't exactly sure of living with hussein since he fears that this will bring him bad repute 
But Madhu's affection gets the better of him and he eventually relents. Hussain's biographer then tells us that Madhu and Hussain undergo a very interesting ritual, that of drinking wine from each other's lips. Quite literally, a ritual that would pass on mystical knowledge or ilm tazawwuf from Hussain to Madhu. Following this, Hakikat al Fukra describes in great detail the passion play of Madhu and Hussein. And to those who shun such a contact, it is reasoned that touch, especially the transference of fluids such as wine or saliva, was a not so uncommon way of transferring knowledge from the peer to the murid basically from the spiritual teacher to the spiritual student. As Scott Kugel informs us, the green saint or Khaja Khizr is said to have given knowledge to Shah Hussain by making Hussain drink some water from Khizr's own palm. Hussain's biographer insists that Madhu and Hussain's passion play is not in any way a sin but an exercise in spirituality. United thus in spirit and flesh, Madhu and Hussain start living together in the Bhagbanpura area, which is now really close to the Shalimar garden area of Lahore. Their union not only helped Madhu ascend spiritually, but also Hussain. Denounced a heretic, Hussain's biographer informs us that he was arrested by a Kotwal of Mughal Emperor Akbar and was chained. Yet, the chains kept falling off of Hussain's feet miraculously. This triumph is perhaps something that he also alludes to in one of his kafi, which says, Is vede vich makna hathi sangal baal khede Kahi Hussain fakir saida jagdiyanu which basically translates to in this courtyard a young elephant breaks its chains says Hussein the fakir of God who can bother the enlightened Hussein then met with the Mughal Emperor Akbar himself who questioned the saints habit of drinking wine the philosophical exchange that followed impressed Akbar so much that Hussein was acknowledged as a great saint, which increased his standing in the society. Abdul Rahim Khane Khanan, yes, the Rahim of the famous Dohas, sought the blessings of Hussein marching on a campaign and emerged victorious. In all this, however, Hussein's sexuality seems to have never rankled with the Mughals. Which is interesting considering Akbar's own grandfather, Babur's sexuality and his love for the boy, Babari, did rankle with Akbar and as Rubilal informs us, challenged Akbar's model of masculinity. Yet, Hussein's biographer makes absolutely no mention of Hussein's sexuality as being a discussion subject for Akbar. Historically speaking, it's possible that Hussein and Akbar never really met. Yet, Akbar is associated with most Bhakti Sufi saints from Meera to Kabir. Possibly, Akbar's eclectic worldview, his curiosity, his openness to learning different opinions on religion, as well as his power, made him a regular character in these legends extolling a saint's miracle. These saints were so miraculous, Mughal Emperor Akbar was impressed. Yet, while Hussein's rendezvous with Akbar is still up in the air, Akbar's grandson, his beloved grandson rather, Dara Shukho, did mention Shah Hussein in his book, Hasnat ul Arifin. Before Shukho, his father, Emperor Jahangir, ordered his noble, Bahar Khan, to record Hussein's everyday life, which was later compiled in the book, Bahariya. And as for our Madho, after having spent many years in Hussein's company, 
He joined the military service of Raja Man Singh for three years and then returned to be with Hussain and was by his side when the saint died in 1599 AD. Buried next to their home, Hussain's grave was separation for Madho, who wished to die to be with Hussain but lived for 35 more years, a lot of which were again spent fighting in the military service while the other years were spent being a Sajjada Nasheen or the caretaker of the Darga of Shah Hussain. And when Madhu died, he was buried next to Hussain. And this is where they both lie, together forever. Their Urs, which is literally their marriage or union with God, is celebrated each year as the Mela Charaga or the festival of lights. Lovely tale of love and defiance. Eh? Fascinatingly, Shah Hussain's love story became so famous, he is till date referred to as Madhulal Hussain. The names Hussain and Madhulal fused into one just like their spirits. Yet, most scholars shy away from accepting the historicity of his story. Especially because the record of Hussain's kafiya does not include the name Madhu anywhere. Only the epithet Lal is mentioned, which is often interpreted only as the beloved. And with Madhu, what's also missing from Hussain's kafiya is his penchant for wine, which is ironically readily accepted in scholarly debates. Why the dichotomy? It's quite obvious that verses mentioning Madho and wine were filtered out from Hussain's compilation of Kafiya available to us today simply because Madho and Hussain's story remains as defiant of societal norms today as it did then. In fact, Hussain and Madho's story is a lot more defiant today than it was yesterday since despite the censure Madhu and Hussain could live together at that time. Wonder what would they go through in today's subcontinent which is so armed with prejudice and hatred. Not that any of this ever bothered Madhu or Shah Hussain who lost in the rhythm of love lie together in Shalimar Gardens today. Hussain having transcended above societal boundaries proudly proclaims himself as crazy or kamli and fakir nimana or lowly fakir and accordingly sings for madho jangal bele phirato niti haje na payo lal kahe husain fakir nimana je mile ta thiva nihal which translates to i roam the forest searching but i still haven't found lal Says Hussain, the lowly fakir, I will be delighted when I find my beloved. And that is all that I have for you today. Please note that there is a list of sources listed in the description box that you can go ahead and read if Madhu and Hussain's story had some impact on you and you're really curious. Or if you just want to fact check everything that I blabbered over here. And before you just walk away, Please like and share the video and subscribe to the channel and do let me know what is it that you would like me to talk about in the next episode.